Welcome, or welcome back to Surrey Supernatural. My name is Graham, and today I will tell you about a local legend from Surrey. This is the story of Blanche Harriet. On the banks of the River Thames, not far from London, lies the town of Chertsey. Most people will probably know Chertsey from Fort Park, but the residents that live there will probably know the story of the heroine that Chertsey is also known for. It was the year 1471, and the War of the Roses had just finished with the House of York regaining the throne, and anyone who had fought against them for the House of Lancaster were to become traitors. Neville Wardley had fought for the House of Lancaster, and was now regarded as a traitor and was facing execution. Neville decided he had to leave the country, but before he did, there was one thing he had to do. Neville headed to Chertsey to see the love of his life, a girl by the name of Blanche Harriet. Neville headed to Chertsey Abbey, where he knew he could seek sanctuary. When he arrived, he was in for a bit of a shock, as when he arrived, he found a group of Yorkists, the last people he wanted to run into. The Yorkists decided to take poor old Neville prisoner and that he would be charged with treason. It was decided that the very next night that poor Neville would be put to death after the bell rang. In Chertsey at this time, the church bell would be rung to tell all residents to extinguish all fires and to head to bed. The bell had started to be rung just because the year before Chertsey had been savaged by a huge fire. The bell became to, became to be known by residents as the curfew bell. Neville and Blanche knew that once the bell rung, that was it and it would never be together again. There was a glimmer of hope though, as it was not unusual for someone like Neville to be given a royal pardon. A guy was sent to London to see the King and explain Neville's situation. After hearing what the messenger said, the King decided to grant Neville a pardon and to save his life. There was a slight problem though. To make sure the pardon was received and the execution didn't go ahead, the rider had to be back in Chertsey before the bell was rung. The time come and the bell needed to be rung to signal the curfew and for Neville's time to come. However, legend says that this time the rider was still at least a mile from Chertsey and would not make it in time. Someone was sent to the church to ring the bell and for poor Neville's time to be put to death. The rope for the church was pulled, but to their surprise, nothing happened. But why? Unnoticed, Blanche had somehow sneaked into the church and had climbed the bell tower. Blanche reached out and grabbed the clapper of the bell to stop it from hitting the side of the bell and ringing out. However hard they tried, they could not get the bell to ring. Blanche had done it. She had done what she had set out to do. The rider arrived back in Chertsey and explained to everyone that the King had granted a pardon and Neville's execution was cancelled. Blanche and Neville was now able to be together and went on to live happily ever after. Standing near the bridge over the River Thames now stands a statue of Blanche holding on to the clapper of the bell and also the local hospital has named a maternity unit after this local heroine. Thank you for listening. And please don't remember, if you like this, please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. And for now, stay spooky.